in the last stream, we were working on making our way through most of the Bronze Age quest lines here. We completed bronze, we completed improved meta, we made good progress on the simple storage network quest line, and we did get a basic simple storage network up and running, allowing us to access all of our items in all of our chests using this one remote, no matter where we are in the world. And the only quest line that we didn't start work on last time was the third chapter challenge quest line. Now, this doesn't look too bad, and I think it is definitely something we're going to want to work on maybe right at the start here, because we do get four more resonant integral components as a reward for completing this, and that's going to allow us to speed up all of our thermal expansion machines and the compression dynamo powering them, and it's going to make just processing resources so much faster going forward. Between streams, I have done a little bit more sifting of the improved organic matter, and I've processed all of those ingots into their uh, ingot form. So we do have a little bit of iron, a little bit of aluminum, some copper, tin, nickel, and I did process a fair amount of gold armor uh, from this chest into gold ingots as well. Um, there is some work I need to do here because this chest is completely backlogged. Um, a few of these are not gonna be too difficult. A few of these are just a case of adding a new filter to the, uh, the trash can whitelist, but a few of these are items that we do want to keep but have filled up on space. For example, gunpowder, rotten flesh, and arrows. We have maxed out this storage drawer's ability to hold those three items. And so there are two things we can do here. We can either add a void upgrade, like we did to this drawer here. That will just delete any excess gunpowder, rotten flesh, or arrows that we get. Alternatively, we could buy an upgrade. All of the upgrades are available here in the shop. The lowest tier is uh, tier one, can be bought for four B-Bucks. The highest one is tier five and can we buffer 12 b books which is actually not too bad normally this would require emeralds which of course we don't currently have access to and i don't think we're going to have access to for quite some time but given that we have so many b books and not really a whole lot to spend our b books on i feel like we might as well just go ahead and buy the highest tier upgrade here and drop that into the drawer now we do have the same problem with bones as well and so i think i will go ahead and buy another one of these to put here like that that should allow us to hopefully start clearing out a little bit of this uh, this bank log. Right now, I also don't believe we have any kind of upgrade in here. We've got a basic pipe upgrade, but we did get a, uh, a netherite pipe upgrade as a quest reward at the end of the last stream. So we can go and just swap that out to make that a nice bit faster. There we go, fantastic. And then uh, real quick, I will go ahead and add the remainder of these items to the, uh, the trash can whitelist. Okay, so I filtered out everything that's not gold. Again, at some point we can take all of this and uh, begin processing that into even more gold ingots. It is three gold ingots per armor piece, so we're gonna have so much gold available to us. It's gonna be fantastic. Speaking of which, one thing I might do, again, right at the start here, before we start working on the uh, under the sea quest line, which is gonna be the plan for today's stream, I think I'm also gonna go to at iron chests and see about upgrading some of the chests that we have over here to higher tier chests, just so that we don't have to worry about running out of space during today's stream, because right now, as you can see, we are a little low on, uh, on storage space, which is not ideal. So in order to upgrade these chests, there are a few things you can do. You can just craft the iron chest right out of the gate, but if you already have chests down on the ground like we do here, you can upgrade those chests using these conversion upgrades. We currently have two iron chests at the top here. We can upgrade those from iron to gold using the iron to gold chest upgrade. And this is made with one iron and eight gold. Right now we have 48 gold and almost a stack's worth of gold available in the chest over there in armor form. And so if we craft two of these, we can then right click these onto our iron chests. Boom and boom. And that's going to increase the capacity of the iron chests by essentially another regular Minecraft chest. Now, the same is kind of true with these chests as well. What we can do here is we can make regular chest to iron chest converters, these ones here. These are a little bit more expensive on the iron front, which is a resource we don't quite have as much of. But uh, you can do the same thing where we go boom and boom. This does get rid of the, the double chest nature of the chests and does mean we are going to have to move some of the stuff here over into the iron chest that uh, they were in previously. But that's fine, I think. And I might even go as far as to upgrade both of these to gold chests as well, just to give us that little bit extra storage space. Boom. And boom. Nice. Okay, so now we've got four gold chests. We do have a fair bit more storage and should have enough storage, I think, to get us through to the end of today's stream. Twitch chat is asking me about the loot chests here. We have 205 loot bags available to us. I will open some of these, but I don't think we're going to get 
a lot that is particularly useful. We're probably going to get a staggering number of ducks, as well as quite a lot of apples and quite a bit of, uh, of rotten flesh. There are also some chests in here that we do get as rewards, but I don't really know if we want that many chests down, especially because right now we don't have that many of these link cables to connect everything up to. So this is what we got out of a, um, a full stack of basic loot boxes. Now, people are pointing out that we have these uh, shining blocks of diamonds. Shine bright can be placed above a solar cooker to use independently of the sun. But people are telling us we can also just craft these into blocks of diamonds. I don't know if this is intentional. Like, I don't know if that's something that Ben did on purpose or if that's a mistake. But that is a lot of diamonds to get from loot chests. So Ben, the creator of the pack, is in the Twitch chat. And he says, no, that's not intended. So I am... I'm not going to use them. We could use them. We could upgrade our, our sieves. But I can tell that if we go a bit further down here, there is um, a quest line. It's actually quite far down. It's down at uh, Colorful Manta is when we unlock the ability to get uh, to get diamonds. So I don't think that it's intended for us to be able to get diamonds this early. And I assume that the diamonds are probably going to be um, removed or this craft conversion is going to be removed in a future update. So you know what? I'm going to throw them away. We're going to get rid of them. It hurts to do because they would be incredibly useful. But for the time being, let's deposit all of our mob drops and uh, let's get these four ducks down on the uh oh again so i think what you got to do here is you've got to if you have multiple ducks i think you have to to spread them out like you have to take them and put them each in their own inventory slot because if you put one down it converts all four of them into one empty sack so you do lose a few ducks there which is less than ideal but uh anyway the uh, main benefit i think from this if nothing else is um is all the food we got 19 cooked apples we've got a bunch of these uh, mystical agriculture apples, which do give you quite a lot of effects, especially something like the Insanium Apple. This gives you absorption, speed, a resistance, regeneration, strength, and haste, which might come in useful in today's stream because what we're going to do is uh, under the Exploring the Depths quest line, the first quest up here in the top right is called Discovering the Deep Dark. The Deep Dark being a new Minecraft biome that was added, I believe, in 1.19. I've not been to the Deep Dark. I have no idea what's going on in the Deep Dark. But uh, I believe we have to progress through the Deep Dark. We have to defeat a Warden to get a Heart of the Deep and a Warden's Carapace. Then we can get a Structure Compass. We need to locate the Ancient City, find Reinforced Deep Slate, and that's going to allow us to get a portal going, I believe. Yeah, a portal to the other side. And then from there, we can start working on the other side quest line. That's going to get us these uh, shards here, these echo shards, which allow us to make the next transformation powder, the skulking transformation powder. Once we have that, we can use it to make skulking organic matter, which we can then sift to get gold and silver, along with more echo shards to repeat the process and get even more skulking organic matter, which is then going to allow us to push forward into the Electromage. So that is the plan there. But before we do any of that, I do want to see about completing the chapter challenge quest line for the Bronze Age. So I do believe that we should have more than enough iron. We only need eight. We got 16. Fantastic. Nickel. Again, we only need eight and we've got a stack. Fantastic. And then the last one was aluminum, which you got 46 of. Again, eight is all that is required. There we go. And that should be that quest complete. Then we've got a network cable and sand dust. So I did make some more sand dust between streams because I did make even more of the, um, the powder that allows us to make the improved organic matter. But it looks like I've used most of it. So I will go ahead and drop a little bit more sand over into the pulverizer there. While that's working on that, we need eight copper hammers. One, two, three three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And boom. We then need 36 bronze, which again should be easy to do. We've got a bunch of copper and we've got a bunch of tin. Let's put both of those into the old induction smelter over here. What else do we need? We need eight improved organic matter. We've got well over a stack over in here. So we'll take that up to eight. I don't know why that went into a different slot there. That's fine. And boom. Then the final quests here are for 16 Invark and Stantan Alloy, 32 Sand Dust, 128 Kelp, and 32 Network Cable. The Network Cable, again, just requiring more Aluminum and more Invark and Stantan Alloy. The Bronze is done. Let's take that out. And then before we start working on that Invark and Stantan Alloy, which we are going to need a lot of to get these two quests complete, let's hand this in. Let's hand in the Sand Dust, if we have enough. Not quite, but we can temporarily move this integral component over to here just to make it a little bit faster. There we go, perfect, and then we can put it back like so. Quest complete. And then for the kelp, I think the idea here is that we just need to put on our diving suit that we made in the last episode and, uh, and head down to the sea floor to try and get some regular Minecraft kelp. 
Now, this is where potentially some kind of night vision might come in useful because it is incredibly dark down here. But getting a large amount of kelp, really? Oh, look at that. You can... Huh, so you can just kind of stand inside the kelp and get like a nice night vision effect. Interesting. But getting a large amount of kelp here should really just be a case of uh, breaking the bottom of all of these uh, kelp vines or kelp strands. And then uh, all of the kelp should just rise up to the surface, at which point we should be able to fairly easily collect, uh, hopefully, well more than two stacks of, uh, of kelp. That is a lot of kelp, and it looks like it's going to take a moment or two for it all to make its way up to the surface. Okay, so I think that's probably enough kelp. Real quick, do I have a spare storage drawer lying around? I don't. That's fine. We can make another just kind of regular Minecraft storage drawer here. That's going to allow us to hold all of this kelp so that it doesn't clog up our, uh, our chest system. All right, so there is 1,170 kelp, which is going to be more than enough for us to, um, to complete this quest here. So real quick, let's grab two stinks. Boom. And boom. Okay, so now we just need more of the Invar Constantan alloy. That is not going to be a problem at all. All right, so a little bit of Invar Constantan alloy making later. We now have the 16 required to complete this quest, and I believe we should have enough to make four lots of eight network cable. Network. Boom. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Let's hand that in. And with that, we get access to all of these quest rewards. Might as well go ahead and claim everything all at once. Not only do we get four resonant integral components that we can right click to install onto our thermal expansion machines, but we also get two of these spot build pelicans from the uh, Endless Ocean mod, the same mod, I believe, that adds the uh, the jet ski. So uh, let's have a look here real quick. Oh my goodness. Oh, these were the guys that were, uh, they were on the water earlier in the stream or earlier in the series. I think we saw one right at the start, just hanging out. Anyway, for now, we'll go ahead and put the other one away in the system just in case we need it at some point in the future. And let's take a look at exploring the depths. So this is where we need the nature's compass from the last stream. What we can do here, we can right click, we can search deep dark and if we double click on that it's going to show us where the nearest deep dark biome is thankfully it's only 60 blocks away now i think we are going to have to dig quite far down to get to it because the deep dark as the name suggests is quite a um a deep and dark biome so a few things i think we are probably going to want to get a decent amount of food the apples here will, will probably do the job but i might also take a few of the uh, improved apples from mystical agriculture, just in case we find ourselves in a sticky situation. Not only do these give regeneration, they also give uh, strength and haste, which is gonna make life a lot easier. But um, I also think we could do with some better tools. Right now we've got one stone X. I think we could do with at the very least a better pickaxe and a better shovel so we can dig down more effectively. And on top of that, I think a, um, a mildly decent sword and a decent set of armor is also gonna be essential. So I think right now, the uh, the best armor that we have access to is probably still just iron. We do have uh, this mod called Tools Complement in that adds stuff like bronze armor, invar armor, constantan armor. But other than the invar chest plate, which is better than the iron chest plate, it adds seven armor instead of six. I don't think the rest of the armor is actually any good. Like the iron leggings is five armor, the invar leggings is also five armor, and nothing here. Like bronze is also five, nickel is five, electrum is three. None of those are really better than iron. None of them beat five. So I think what we'll probably do is just make like a full armor set of, of iron maybe. Although maybe we'll go with bronze because we've got a lot more tin and copper than we do iron right now. And I don't really want to have to do too much sifting. And so processing the bronze is probably the best bet here. But uh, we'll also probably go with the Invar chest plate because I think it's by far the best. In terms of tools, I actually don't know like which shovel is going to be the best. There is like the bronze shovel and the Invar shovel, I don't know how those compare to like an iron shovel, but uh, we'll also make some of those as well, I guess. All right, so I think we should now have enough bronze and enough Invar. We'll use the Invar to make the chest plate and we'll make everything else here out of bronze because it looks to be as good as iron, but uh, it's cheaper because we've got a ton of tin and a ton of copper. Now, I'm probably gonna do the same in terms of weaponry. I think the best weapon that we can make right now is just an iron sword, and the bronze sword is basically exactly the same. So I'll... Ah, oh, the Invar sword does do a little more damage. It does 6.5 as opposed to just the uh, the regular 6. So I think the Invar sword is probably the way to go then. Sure, okay. It's a tiny little bit more damage, 
but I'll take it. So boom, there's that Invar sword. And then for everything else, we will just go ahead and use uh, use bronze for the time being. We'll have a bronze shovel. We'll take a bronze pickaxe. And we might as well, whilst we're here, make a bronze axe as well. Uh, Twitch chat is pointing out that the extra 0.5 <laughs> damage really isn't going to make that much of a difference against the, uh, the Warden. However, I do see that Ben has added this uh, Warden Smite Enchant book. It says the enchantment can be added to a sword to deal an extra 100 damage to the Warden per level. A level 5 version of this book will instantly kill a Warden, combining two of the same previous level books in an anvil will create the next level. So I think what we're probably going to want to do here then is head through to the deep dark, try and get a block of this skulk. We can then use that to make the Warden Smite enchantment. We are probably going to need a lot more experience if we're going to combine this up to, um, to level 5. Level 5 would be ideal because it would allow us to instantly kill the Warden with one hit. But whether or not we're going to have enough XP to make that happen is yet to be seen. But uh, I guess for the time being, let's hop in our jet ski. And uh, do I want to take the, the diving suit with me? I feel like I should, right? Do I need to wear the diving suit, actually? Ah, I don't know, because the, the deep dark is real far down. And I take damage if I'm not wearing the diving suit. So do I have to wear the diving suit whilst fighting him? The chat is telling me that uh, it's only when you're in water that you take damage under Y level 60. So I can take the armor off. And also, for the time being, I'll put basically everything that's not food or, uh, or tools away. We'll keep the nature's compass. We're going to need that. Um, people are telling me to take eggs, potentially, to... Um, to distract the warden. Again, I have no idea what I'm uh, what I'm up against here, but we'll find out shortly, I guess. Uh, we don't need any of these for the time being. I'll keep the apple so we have some food, and this all looks fine. So we'll take our armor off. We will swap that out for the jet suit, which is going to allow us to, uh, to get down below Y level 60 and to the deep dark. Once we get into the deep dark, we can then take this off and swap it out for our better armor. So let's see here. We're going to turn the engine on, and let's see if we can't make our way over to the deep dark. The compass here does kind of show you on the uh, toolbar as well which way you're going, so you don't necessarily have to be holding it, but uh, it is a little easier if you are holding it. Okay, so the compass is telling me that it's around here. I think it's a little tricky because the compass is struggling with the fact that the biome is kind of like underground, which I think is something that's kind of new for Minecraft 1.19. But uh, if we head down here, I think we should be able to, uh, to dig down and find the deep dark. So if we use our altar mine here, so if you hold the altar mine key and then uh, hold shift and scroll, you'll see in the top left you can change the shape of like the blocks you break. If you go to small tunnel while mining down, it will just mine a tunnel that goes right down, which I think is exactly what we're after. But we didn't bring any torches, and I do have a sneaking suspicion that the deep dark might be quite dark. I also do kind of want to wait for the um, for the water to fall down here. Like, I don't want to get ahead of the water in case I fall. Quest complete. Discover the lush caves. Okay. Maybe there's a lush cave biome, like, real f a bit further up. Chen is right. We do, of course, have wireless crafting, so I can just grab the torches out of the system here. And if needs be, we can always craft some more up once we're down in the cave. Okay, so we have run into a bit of a problem here, and that's this uh, this ore. It says ores cannot be broken, so uh, we do have to uh, work around the ore that's already there. Okay, so we went all the way down to bedrock and didn't find anything. Right here, under the minimap, it does say that we're in the deep dark, and I do see something on the minimap, like, in this direction. So I'm going to keep on small tunnel, and I'm going to kind of dig out in a few different directions here and see if we can't find... The, uh, the biome that we're looking for. Okay, so I see some skulk. Which is maybe a good thing. This doesn't look like the deep dark to me. It's... Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, okay. This definitely looks a little... Oh. Okay, I don't know what fired at me there. <laughs> Something moved. So the good news is, this skulk vein... Uh, this says it needs uh, a hoe. Do I need a hoe to break it to get... Um, is this how I get... The tendrils or the tendrils elsewhere? Skulk van. Let me get um let me get a hoe, just in case. Okay, so we didn't get anything for using that. Alright. Um for now, all we need is some of this. Can we not break this? 
Okay, so it looks like the idea is that we're going to make the summoning altar and bring the summoning altar back. The fact that it says breaking this will drop experience is kind of great. Oh, so maybe... Oh, no, that's just a block, I think, as well. Assuming we don't die, which is a big if, let's go back to uh, shapeless, which is the standard mode here. If we break a ton of this, we do get some experience, which might make it a little easier for us to get up to the uh, to the Warden 5 smite enchant, which would be quite good. Okay, so let's, for now, <laughs> um, head back up this way. I only need to go and get, uh, actually, we don't need to head back, right? We can just make the, um, the altar here, as long as we have the things we need, which we might not do, because I don't know if we've got any poor transformation powder in the system. Never mind, we totally do. Nice. Okay, so there's the summoning altar. If I place that down onto the skulk block, uh, there is a quest line for this, by the way, further back up here, passive mobs, which we've not really worked on, but uh, this says the summoning altar can be used to summon some mobs, placing the required items inside, and the catalyst last will start the summoning. The catalyst last. Interesting. So, like, if we wanted to get, uh, let's say, a spawn cow. Oh, so I think we put on the, the four items like this, then the catalyst is the uh, poor transformation powder, and that outputs two cows. Interesting. That doesn't seem too difficult either. We might go back and uh, see about completing some of these quests while we're at it. But uh, for now, we're looking to get the uh, the smite, right? And if we want to get Warden Smite, we just need a regular book, and that's it. So do we have what it takes to make a book? I'm going to assume the answer is no, because we don't have any leather. However, we should be able to, if we head back, get some leather fairly easily, because we can just turn rotten flesh into leather, and then, of course, we can grow some sugar cane to get some uh, some paper. So uh, real quick, let's head back and uh, let's see if we can't get, I guess, a couple of books. Again, if we're going to try and go for uh, for Smite 5, we're going to need quite a few of them. I will go ahead and put a waypoint down here. Uh, if you press J, you can then go waypoints, new, and we'll put deep, dark, entrance, save. That's just so we can find this entrance hole when we, uh, when we swim back. To be honest, though, it's not particularly far away from our island, so it's not like it would be particularly hard to find it without the waypoint, but just in case you're uh, watching this and you uh, have your deep dark a little further away, then uh, then the waypoints can be useful. Also, you can do uh, slash set home. That adds a uh, home spot, and then from there, if you type in slash home anywhere else in the world, it will teleport you back to that spot. Uh, pretty useful, especially if you get uh, caught in a spot that uh, is tricky to get out of. But uh, now that we're back, let us grab a bunch of rotten flesh. We'll craft that into bundle flesh, and we'll get that uh, drying out over on the drying rack. While we wait for that, let's grab some sugar cane, which I think we should have in our system. We've got one, which is uh, it's not a ton. I don't think we can shift this. Like, we can shift, but it doesn't do anything. What we should probably do is we should probably get a, um, a botany pot and, uh, and get some sugar cane growing passively. Thankfully, there is only one output when you put uh, sugar cane into a hopping botany pot. And so uh, if we just do something like this with the botany pot on top, and then uh, if we grab some sand, uh, we can place the sand in with the sugar cane. And over time, this will slowly but surely just produce sugar cane and deposit that sugar cane down into the drawer. Interestingly, even though you can't burn meal regular sugar cane, what you can do here is you can burn meal the botany pot. And so if we right click the botany pot like this, that is actually gonna get us some sugar fairly quickly. The downside here is that for some reason, sometimes it takes a minute for the botany pot to actually harvest the sugar. Like this is fully grown. I can't right click anymore without opening the pot, but it takes like a second or so before it actually deposits that sugar cane into the, uh, into the drawer. But either way, this is still a much faster way of getting sugar cane than either waiting for this to grow naturally or shifting to try and make this grow a tiny bit faster. Either way, our 32 leather is done. Uh, let me quickly dump some of the stuff that we have in our inventory here into the system because we're carrying a lot of stuff and we have zero space for it. Let's grab whatever sugar cane we have. Let's make some regular old Minecraft paper. And then boom and boom. That's gonna get us a couple of books. Now we get a, um, a Warden Smite 2 book as a reward for making the Warden Smite 1 book. That means that if we can get two Warden Smite 1 books, we can combine those into a Warden Smite two, and then we can combine that Warden Smite two with the free Warden Smite two to get a Warden Smite three. The Warden Smite three isn't going to be an instant kill, but it is going to be a two hit kill. 
Because the Warden Smite 3 is going to deal 300 damage. If we hit twice, that's 600 damage, right? So that might be enough. Let's head back to the altar and see how difficult or easy it's going to be for us to get some of these uh, Warden Smite enchants. Okay, so back down here. How easy is this? If I just put the book on, does that just transform it into... Oh, it does. Look at that. We just get Warden Smite 1. And it's got a cool sound effect as well. All right, so there's three lots of Warden Smite. Uh, now we can do slash home to get uh, home much, much faster, which is fantastic. The only trouble now is that we need an anvil. And currently, we have a grand total of, I think, zero iron. We've got four iron. And uh, if we're going to get uh, an anvil, we're going to need three blocks of iron plus four more iron. And so I think, chat, that we are going to have to uh, temporarily take a bit of a detour here and, uh, and get some more of this uh, improved organic matter, which shouldn't be too difficult. Again, it's mostly just the, um, the pulverized sand dust with the old matter, which we now have 1,130 uh, of, along with some more pebbles, which again, I'm pretty sure we've got some uh, in the system and we've got a bunch of them lying around in here as well. I think I will go ahead here. I think what we'll do is we'll get some of this matter being made. We'll then use the first bits of iron that we get to make more meshes so we can get this full three by three area here uh, ironed up and then once we've got nine iron meshes then we'll start using the extra iron from that to make the anvil just so that going forward we don't have to keep using one singular mesh to get uh, all of our iron which is a little bit tedious yo okay so we just walked over to our mob farm and because we're killing mobs using the player damage plate this kills mobs as if a player killed mobs, which means when the mobs die, they do drop experience. And so when I wandered over here, we just went up from level 10 to level 30 instantaneously. So that's a nice little bump in, uh, in the amount of XP that we have. All right, so a lot of sifting later. We now have enough iron to make the regular Minecraft anvil. We'll go ahead and drop that down like so. And then we can combine our two tier one books into a tier two book. And then we can claim our reward for a tier two book and we should be able to combine those two tier two books up into a tier three book. Now it's possible we might be able to get this up to tier five. I'm interested in how much XP we're actually getting from our mob farm. I'm gonna head back over to the boat because I've not been back since, and our frog is trapped by the looks of it, but I've not been back since I got the first boost. We're at level 19, 24, it's not bad. The mobs are coming in fairly quick, so we are getting some XP there. I think it might be possible for us to get this up to level five. Chat does make a good point. We should check how much it costs to actually add it to the sword. It costs nine to add it to the sword. And I assume that cost will go up if we try and get up to tier five, but we can do a quick slash back here. And that's gonna take us down to, uh, to this area again. Uh, the slash back command takes you back to wherever you were the last time you did slash home. But down here, we can of course just go ahead and break a bunch of the skulk to try and get more levels. We can also do a quick slash home here and try and get uh, some more books. Hopefully we've got some more sugar cane now. We do, fantastic. Again, having that come in passively is gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. And that's gonna allow us to make even more books. And of course, again, slash back, we can just put all those books onto this altar and, um... oh, I broke the, the, the block beneath it. Okay, let me uh, move this over to here. And uh, let's continue trying to get uh, even more of these uh, tier one Warden Smite enchants. All right, so we've got four more tier one Warden Smite enchants. Let's see about getting these leveled up. So there's another tier three, and there's a tier four. It costs 14 levels. And then if we want to get to tier five, we've got to take it one step further, get another tier four, which is also quite expensive. And then we have to apply it to our sword. I feel like that's going to be too many enchantment levels. Like we're not getting enough from our mob farm here and we should definitely invest in some kind of better boarding system for our boat. But um, I don't think we're going to get enough from the mob farm here. Yeah, that's just 12. We could break more of the, uh, the blocks down in the deep dark, but those don't give you a particularly large amount of XP. So even if we broke a ton of these, and I am being a bit careful here because apparently chat's telling me I need to be quiet as we, uh, as we move around so that we don't um, just die. But uh, I don't think there's enough of this stuff around 
to get us a reasonable amount of experience. Yeah, breaking all of the uh, the skulk blocks around has only got us up to level 19, which means we can combine these to level 4. But then if we want to apply this to our sword, it now costs 15 levels to apply it to, level, uh, to the sword. And so I don't think tier 5 is going to be doable here. Even getting this tier 4 one here is going to be a bit of a pain in the backside and probably isn't worth it, given that um, with a tier 3 enchant, it takes two hits to kill the warden. With a tier 4 enchant, it still takes two hits to kill the warden. So um, I feel like we probably did waste uh, some levels here to get this level 4 book, but I'm a little hopeful that it might make it a little easier to kind of hit and then hit again fast without having to fully recharge the sword to uh, to kill the warden. I'm hoping, I've not fought the warden before, but I'm hoping that we can uh, kind of double hit and kill him before he has a chance to, uh, to attack back. All right, so a bunch more skulk breaking later, and we now have enough levels to get the uh, Warden Smite 4 enchant here. We could have tried to push for five, but I think it was gonna take way too long to get all of those levels. So now it's just a case of heading back down to the deep dark and seeing if we can't get a Warden to spawn. So the three quests here say, Skulk tentacles grow inside the deep dark. Skulk breaking this will drop experience. And Seer Skulk Shrieker making too much noise will trigger this block. Triggering it three times will cause a Warden to summon. I don't think we've seen any of these Skulk Shriekers yet, so I think we'll have to wander around a bit and see if we can't find one. And then once we find one, trigger it three times to spawn a Warden. I'm being told by the Twitch chat that the Warden cannot see me, but can hear me. So I need to be quiet, kind of sneak up on him, and then try and, I guess, hit him twice before he can kill me. I'm also being told he's very powerful, and that uh, I can't afford to get hit at all. So the Twitch chat is telling me, we've done a bit of exploration here, but the uh, Twitch chat is telling me that it looks like this deep dark biome doesn't have the um the ancient city in it that we need and it also by the looks of it doesn't have any um shriekers either so i think what we're gonna have to do is head on back up to the surface and then go far enough away on our jet ski so that the nature's compass kind of locks onto a different deep dark biome at which point we can make our way over to that one and try and find a shrieker okay so it looks like you have to redo the search i feel like that didn't used to be the case with the uh the compass but um, if you want it to reset, you gotta go a little ways away and then you gotta type in deep dark again and double click on it and it'll redo a scan. But uh, as it turns out, we are directly on top of one here. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and see if we can't find the, uh, the biome. Okay, so we found another deep dark. Okay, that worries me. This area is substantially larger than the last one, and I see what I believe to be the screecher that we're after. So, nice and quietly, nice and quietly. I have no idea how quiet we have to be, but chat's telling me to shift. So we're gonna quietly make our way over here, and the idea, I believe, is that the sensors nearby, like these guys, are what tell the Shrieker that I'm here. There are two Shriekers right next to each other. Does that mean I'm gonna get two Wardens, chat? I assume that is what that means. If um, we make a noise three times, then this will summon a Warden. It's so dark. Whoops. Kill me 
instantly. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. Okay. Like, I was, I clicked so fast and he just killed me instantly. All right. Well, so I have a death stone and I believe I can right click this to go back. Oh, he took me here? Oh, no, there we go. All right. It's just that easy, chat. It's just that easy. Unfortunately, we only got a um, a heart of the deep, and the the heart of the deep. Yeah, easy first try. <laughs> now we do also need a um, a carapace, so I feel like we need to just spawn another one, right? Unless I've just missed the carapace and it's lying around somewhere, which I don't think it is. So I think we um, there's just a duck hanging around here as well. Oh, I threw an egg, of course. Um, so I think we just have to spawn another one, right? Hard to get him to summon? So I don't know if I can actually kill this guy. Because he one-shots me. And like... I can... I don't know if I can hit him twice fast enough. Because he turns around so quickly. Oh, we did it. Let's go. Alright. Slash home. Get out of there. Jeez. Okay, right. We got the um the carapace and we got the uh the heart of the deep. Nice. So we can claim our rewards here. And then now we want to make the structure compass, I guess, because it says that we need to find the ancient city. Okay, so we need um four iron and the carapace that we just unlocked. That should be fine. I think we have four iron. Structure compass. We don't have four iron. That's fine. Um, we can do a tiny little bit of sifting here. Actually, I think I did leave a little bit of iron over in here cooking. I did. Fantastic. Okay, let's get the structure compass. And then find structure ancient city. So I assume that we probably want to go back. So we're back here. Let's see. If I use the structure compass, no structure has been set. Right click to select a structure. Okay, you need to shift right click. I see. Okay. Ancient city. Select. So now if I right click, 472 blocks away. That's quite far away. Okay, so I see some bricks over there. I'm going to assume that's where we're headed. What's the range on the shriekers? Like how far away? Or how close, I should say, do you have to be for them to hear you? It looks like we're far enough away here because we're not triggering any of the shriekers down there. Which is good. I might eat one of our apples here, you know. Strength, haste, all the goodness for a few minutes. So once we get into the ancient city, find reinforced deep slate. Using the heart of the deep on the reinforced deep slate found in the ancient city, you can create a portal to the other side. And then we can also use... Oh, I see, we can put the altar on top of the reinforced deep slate to turn bronze armor into warden armor from the deeper and darker mod, which is going to give us uh, just better protection. I see. Um. So holding shift does a pretty good job at not triggering the shriekers. I've got my heart of the deep ready. 
I need to find... I'm not going to open any of these chests, because I assume, I assume opening a chest is real loud. But uh, I need to find the deep slit. Okay, so I think we found what we're looking for. The wall mix is what quieter. There's a big old portal thing hanging around over there. So presumably, that's where we're going to find the reinforced deep slate or whatever it is that we're after. Do want to make sure we sneak around the sensors if at all possible. People are saying that placing wool is, sa is safe as well. <laughs> um, we do have wool. So can I... Okay, wool's nice and quiet. All right, that's fine. Easy peasy. Okay, so here is the structure. And then I just need to find like the... Oh, it looks like... Is it just the, the whole outside area is... um Is like portal frame or something? Oh, yeah, look at that. Reinforced deep slate. So if I just do this... Using the heart of the deep on the reinforced deep slate found in the ancient city, you can create the portal. Oh, apparently I have to remove the the veins first. And uh, presumably I have to do that without triggering too much attention. Okay. There's a little bit more over on this side. We'll vein mine these uh, veins away. Wait, are these veins? Yeah. Oh. So nice and carefully get rid of these. And then just right click with the heart. And boom, we've made our way through to a new dimension. I don't know if this dimension is any more or less dangerous than the ancient city that we came from. We've gone instantly back through because we spawned underground. Okay. Other side D plans. I can't help but notice that this looks to be exactly the same. There's another sensor. I have darkness as a debuff. We can make the armor now, which is pretty good. We can make the armor by putting the reinforced... I assume we can break the portal and then put the... Um, excuse me? Oh, goodbye. Um, I assume we can like break the portal and put a thing down there. To get back? I'm going to do a slash home real quick. Do I need to be here? <laughs> I assume there's something I need from this. Because now... In order to move forward, yeah, here we go. So we've entered the other side. Find the ancient temple. The structure compass will be useful for that. If we find the structure compass, we're then looking for an echo shard. Okay, I see. Well, let's go back then, I guess. Actually, I guess what we should do is we should probably try and get that warden armor sooner rather than later, right? Now, I don't know if you can take, like, already broken armor and upgrade that using the summoning altar. Thankfully, the summoning altar is super easy to make. Um, right now, we are completely out of bronze. We used it all to make our pickaxes, I'm pretty sure. But we do have more copper and tin, and so we can make more bronze fairly easily. So let's make just a regular old chest plate. And then I do want to see if I can use the armor that I already have. So if we do slash back, I'm going to assume that in this dimension, I need to do the same thing and that I need to use wool if I want to not make any sounds. I don't like that this mob, uh, mod sorry, is called Deeper and Darker. It makes me think that it's going to be even more dangerous than the, um, than the, than where we just came from. But let's do this. I don't, oh, there is a Shrieker, I see, okay. This could be bad. I don't know how loud... Okay, apparently that is silent. Oh, but equipping armor. Okay. All right. It's okay. Take out the Shrieker. Can you just break it? So chat's telling me I can just break the Shrieker here. And in doing so, that should stop the Warden from spawning. Because now it doesn't matter if the Skulks hear me, right? Also, here are the, uh, the vines. Can I just break this? I can. It's quite loud, but we got the tendrils that we needed. And again, I don't think it matters now if we're loud because the there's no shrieker around, right?
The good news is that the uh, broken armor does work as well here. And it gives us fully repaired warden armor, which is very nice indeed. Um, I do see something horrific looking over there. It looked kind of skeletal in nature. I, I, I don't know what that was. I don't know if I want to know what that was. But uh, real quick, let's do one of these to get that final piece of armor. That thing right there, what in the world is that? It's like some kind of horrific millipede or something. Okay. Oh, look at that. We get speed as well as a, as a reward there. So we're looking for the ancient temple. Skulk burn. Interesting. All right. So um, structure. Let me shift right click. And then we are looking for the ancient temple. Select. How far away is it? 900 blocks away. Nice. Okay. Well, I'm a little concerned. There are a lot of sensors around here. Obviously, it's only really bad if um, if there's a shrieker around. Run. If I die, Ben, though, what's the... That's, that's going to be bad, right? Just run. <laughs> but people told me that I can get laser beamed by the... By the warden. You got. There are some weird biomes. Overcast Columns is the name of this one. Oh, look at that. Gloom. Can I shift anywhere on this? Oh, I can. Okay. Gloom Cactus. All right. So if, if okay. Okay. So if you shift anywhere here, bad things happen. I'm going to eat one of these apples. Because I think the strength and absorption should allow me to just kind of tank the, the fall here. And we're gonna keep following this uh, this compass. You think I can make that jump with uh, with strength and regeneration? Oh, there's only one way, and that's down. That's too far. Oh, it's water. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. That was planned. Chat, that was planned. All right, let's make our way in this direction. I don't even know where I am. I'm so confused. We're free, we're free, we're free, we're free. Just gotta run. Just gotta run. Just have to. Run? <gasps> okay. <laughs> it's very loud. I need a pickaxe. <laughs> I do not like where we're currently at, though. Um, I need sticks. That's fine. I think we're safe. Which is always famous last words. I've got my, um, excavate set to mining tunnel here. 
and we're just going to try and not get hit by any of the wardens that are anywhere around here. We're getting pretty close. I am going to eat this ample again to keep up the regeneration. Don't fall down that hole that you just made, Isaac. How far away are we? We are 75 blocks away. Okay, so we're pretty close. Okay, hello. Okay, ancient temple has been discovered, apparently. I don't see it. I wonder if it's above or below me. Again, with the pumpkins. Right. Okay, so we've got the structure, apparently. So this ancient skulk can be used to convert improved organic fluid into skulking organic fluid. So I think we put this under the barrel. Yeah, and much like with the uh, lava beforehand, we can turn the improved organic fluid into skulking organic fluid. And then there's echo shards, which we get by sifting skulking organic powder, but the skulking organic powder requires echo shards. So I assume we're gonna maybe find the echo shards, like in the temple, maybe? This looks kind of temple -y. We'll try being a little bit quiet here. And, uh, and we'll see if we can't find... Oh yeah, no, this definitely looks temple -y. Okay, so is there a chest of some persuasion? I see a few chests, okay. So I'm gonna start by just getting rid of the Shriekers. Excuse me. I don't wanna fight you because I don't wanna trigger the other ones. I don't see any sensors. So I don't know if these Shriekers are actually a threat or if is this guy's just chomping on me in the background. So I don't know if these guys are actually a threat or if they're gonna be fine. Oh, there's a sensor there though. As soon as we get rid of this last one, I'll go and fight the other guys who are attacking me. Excuse me, I was in the middle of breaking this. Excuse me, I was in the middle of breaking that. There we go, okay. Right, 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 right. I understand, I'll leave your temple, don't you worry. Don't you worry, okay. Let's not die here, that would be bad. So many snappers! <laughs> there were so many of these snappers. They're not massively powerful, but like... They're annoying. And there's so many of them. Okay, that sounds like a warden. So give me... Got no inventory space! I do need the amethyst shards. But the thing that I really need is, is these. Don't put the heart back, Isaac. You need the heart. I think the glowberry is also a quest reward that we needed to complete. All right, you know what? I think that's all we need. Oh, apparently I dropped a block that I need. Did I drop something back here? Did it disappear? Oh, I need, do I need Skulk? I don't need Skulk, right? What do we need? We need, oh, we need Ancient Skulk. This stuff here is what we need. All right, nice. This is fine. We can always head back to that horrific hellscape at some point in the uh, the future. But uh, we got some Ancient Skulk. We got extra hearts and we got the Echo Shards. I think this is fine because we take the Echo Shards, we craft them into Nuggets and then four Nuggets makes eight powder which makes eight blocks. And then each block has a 30% chance to drop a shard, which means that approximately one in three blocks should drop a shard, and then one shard goes on to make 16 more blocks. So we should really, uh, we should realistically, unless we get horrifically bad uh, luck, we should have more than enough shards here, with the three that we have, to make an infinite number of shards going forward through sifting, and we get an extra four. So Ben's really making sure that we don't run out of shards, even if we do get terribly bad luck. For uh, now, though, if we do this, we get the uh, shard nugget, and then from there, we just need four pebbles and some improved powder. That is fine. So we can take some regular old sand dust out of here. We can take, uh, for now, just one of these out of here. And then we'll also grab some pebbles out of there as well. Let's do one, two, three, four with four sand and one dust, which I thought I got, but I guess I didn't. That's fine. Boom. That gets us the improved powder. And then from there, 
we can upgrade that to the next year of powder with the nuggets. Now, uh, I am going to go ahead and empty out my inventory a little bit here because we've got so much junk on us that it is not even funny. And I'm also going to put my diving suit back on the armor stands because I don't think we're going to need that for uh, hopefully a little bit of time here now that we've done our, our exploration. But uh, boom, there is a quest line complete and the Skull King transformation powder. You love to see it. And so next time, chat, we'll come back. We will get, I guess, another barrel down. The barrel needs the uh, ancient skulk underneath it. We can then place the skulking transformation powder into the barrel that's on top of the ancient skulk that has some of this uh, fluid in it. And then we can use the resultant uh, skulking organic matter to sift for ender pearls, raw gold, and raw silver. I think we are going to have to do a fair bit more work on our automation setup here because right now um, we're not even automating the production of the improved organic matter, let alone how, let alone do we have enough of the uh, organic fluid like left over to automate the uh, skulking organic matter. So I think we'll come back, we'll look at improving our whole setup here. Now that we have so many of these um, resonant integral components, it's probably worth investing in replacing these flux hammers with pulverizers and using the pulverizers to turn cobble to gravel, uh, gravel to sand, and then I believe we can pulverize sand. Oh, we can't pulverize sand into dust because it makes sand dust, right? But that's actually kind of fine because the only thing that we're getting dust for is to sift it into dust. So, and that is what you get as a byproduct of pulverizing sand. So that should be fine, actually. We can probably replace these three flux hammers with just pul uh, two pulverizers. One turning cobble into gravel, the other turning gravel into sand, and then the third, I guess, which is this one here, turning sand into sand dust and also into regular dust. The regular dust we can use to make uh, even more of the first tier of powder. The sand dust, of course, we can use to automate the production of the second tier of powder. And then we can also look at automating the third tier of powder, which shouldn't be too difficult. It's just a case of setting up a system that takes all of the echo shards that we get from sifting the skulking organic matter, crafting them back into nuggets and sending them back around to be crafted into more skulking transformation powder. So there should be fine. Then we can work on getting into compact machines, I guess. And then from there, we can move on into the Electrum Age, which is where we're finally going to get redstone and diamonds. And uh, we're going to get uh, open up into a lot more mods that we currently don't have access to. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Seopolis there.